Our next speaker is going to talk about how she's in, for, in bringing about the level of change so that technologies can actually be adopted, just not at a project, but across the entire organization to truly unlock uh, the power of digitization and true digital transformation. So with that, please, I'd like to welcome uh, Shelley Brown, CIO of Burns & McDonald. Who's familiar with the concepts of IQ or EQ? Show of hands. Have you ever heard of TQ, or technology quotient? This is defined as the ability to use technology to make a difference. It's not just about knowing the technology, it's about tech fluency in conversation with each other. I run into lots of people um, that talk about different areas of cloud, AI, large language models, natural language processing, but most people really don't know what that means. They ask, well, what is the cloud? Why do I care about the cloud? Why does it matter to me? We hear a lot in the industry, tech overall, not just in the construction industry, but in general, digital transformation. However, in my 25 plus years in the technology space, I've seen a lower TQ across all professionals, IT and the business than ever. Our teams have tools that they can use pretty proficiently today because we've been investing in those things for a decade. The problem is, where's the beef? Why aren't we seeing the productivity gains and the return on investments that we had built in our business cases? This is some interesting information from a Deloitte survey that talks about the fact that one in five businesses do not get daily insights on their project performance. I don't know about you all, but if I haven't measured something, it's very difficult to manage it. 80% of construction businesses have only a beginning level of data capabilities or data uh, maturity. And we talk a lot about, I loved, um, Sid, when you said something to the effect of when you turn it and say, but what's your data strategy, customer? I think that's really key. Also, did you know that the app, you guys probably do know this, the average construction manager spends over a day and a half each week just looking for data necessary to do their job. This is only a partial picture of the real gap that exists. Our biggest gap is our ability to communicate effectively. Oftentimes, I'm actually the head of an IT organization. When I go work with people in the business like you all, my teams and your teams are not speaking the same language. We struggle to have meaningful, impactful, and actionable conversations because we don't translate the words and the definitions of things in the same way. Higher TQ will help us translate using a common language so that we have a common understanding across the organization. This is especially important as emerging technologies like AI are transforming our industry. When we say AI, I think it means something different to everybody today. Um, one of the things that my team's done recently is be able to, uh, we've laid a framework out we call Adopt, Evaluate, Hold. And all it does is actually put different um, AI-type technologies in those categories to try and provide guidance to our organization on what's um, safe and secure to use currently. Raising collective TQ is a huge task. It requires us to re-engineer the operating model of our businesses. And in order to get technology to work for us instead of us working for it, this is what I'm trying to achieve as a CIO of a multi-billionaire billion dollar global company. Today I'm going to walk you through how we're going to approach it. First is creating a driver. Um, I'd like to take you back right now to 2019. A lot of people will tell, this, the, tell you that this is the year that Shelley did not get a lot of Christmas cards from her colleagues. Let me tell you why. Burns McDonald's and Microsoft shop today. We use Microsoft 365 for our primary communication and collaboration tools. At this time in 2019, Microsoft Teams was the final frontier that we needed to deploy in that suite. So we took it upon ourselves in 2019 to start deploying Teams room system, including video technology, to 600 plus conference rooms globally. At the time, we'd been using Skype, Microsoft Skype for chat, I mean, and everybody loved it. It was great. We didn't have any retention. It was, you know, you'd have a chat and it was gone. But we lacked a cons consistent collaboration um, approach when it came to you no know, video conferencing at the time. So people didn't like that change, and I was very unpopular, which I'm used to as an IT leader, <laughs> for driving teams into our culture. But, a night, but Microsoft had already announced that they were going to retire Skype, so it's not like we really had a choice. I knew it was going to be a heavy lift, 
and it was going to take a long time for our organization to adopt a new way of working. So now, we all remember what happened in March 2020, right? Go home, take your monitors and your webcams and everything you need to keep working. Never in my 25 plus year career as an IT professional have I seen a technology adopted so quickly. It was really painful at times because our whole company, over 12,000 at that time people, were learning to use video conference technology together. But that was the driver. We had to. The truth is, it's really difficult to overcome people's fears and their free will <laughs> unless there is a driver to do so. People really do have the capacity and willingness to, up, uh, to improve and increase their TQ, but they often need a trigger or the desire to do so. At this point, it took just 30 days to turn us around. We had those 12,000 people, they were uh, team savvy, and things were going pretty well. We were keeping the company running. Um, and I was really excited because I got the first time and the last time, to be honest, that um, our CEO gave me an A for our effort as an IT organization. Normally, I only get a C. You're just doing what you need to do, or you get an F, and that's it. <laughs> so however, however I, so I asked him, I said, do you think that now that we've built this additional trust with the business, that they're going to you know, provide us with more insight and collaboration? And he goes, no way. Unless there's another global pandemic, you're still getting a C or an F. <laughs> So let's hope there's not another global pandemic that gets, uh, gets me another A, but let's shift into another driver, another type of driver, which is the universal language of money. I'm going to talk a little bit about digital judgment. Raising TQ requires everyone to make better technology decisions that are driven based on business outcomes that they're trying to achieve. Today we have business technologists. These folks really don't have IT backgrounds, um, but they're digital natives, is what I like to call them. They create lots of cool solutions in the business, and they have great intentions, but they have horrible digital judgment. Speaking of judgment, imagine adopting a puppy without getting your family on board first. It's really cute, isn't he cute? <laughs> um, it's really easy to sign the adoption papers, and you just know how much better your life's gonna be with that cuddly fur baby at home. But once you're at home with your cuddly new fur baby, the reality sets in. You might have forgotten about your cat that's never been around a puppy before. Are they going to get along? Is the puppy house broken? The puppy has no manners, hasn't been trained, tears up your shoes and socks, gets in your trash. He has fleas, much like bugs and software. Um, and you need to keep him secure, so you probably better put a fence in your backyard. Oh, and then you realize, too, that he needs to go to the vet. He needs to have shots. He needs to buy toys. You have to walk him. Oh, and like when you're going to events like this, you have to board him and make sure he's taken care of. Adopting a puppy is not a one-time expense. There are ongoing operating expenses and people that are required to care and uh, look after that puppy. It's a lifetime commitment, and it's also emotionally and intellectually and financially um, taxing. So if you've had a puppy before, like me, you have better judgment than just to adopt a puppy on a whim. The same goes for software. Without a high TQ, people lack the digital judgment around the life cycle of technology and the necessary human interaction, support, and financial investment that it requires to actually get the ROI that your business case had planned. I like to talk about this um, as the, the iceberg of IT. It's much like a puppy. Technology, technology is where, rarely WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. Raising TQ involves driving awareness for the total cost of ownership. TCO. TCO is essential to have clarity, and it's way better to do your total cost analysis before the transaction. You may make an investment of a six or seven figure investment in technology, that's simply the ticket to entry. Getting value from that investment requires people with technology skills, and even more importantly, an organization that's willing to adopt the new technology. I love some of our other speakers' information about the different training that they're providing and helping people learn, because that's really, truly the way to get the value. In order to help our businesses make smart decisions about the investments that they make, we wanted them to focus on the business outcomes that they're trying to achieve to drive value. Improving their digital judgment is where that clarity can come from. So let's circle back to money as a driver. 
One of my teams actually delivers what we call the Bill of IT um, on a quarterly basis to our P&L owners. In the past, they would get their, their financial statements and there'd be one line item of technology, which meant there was no details, which meant there was no levers for them to pull. They couldn't determine what they needed to spend more on or less on, so they felt like they had no control and they had no, va no way to determine the value of, that they were actually receiving for their investments. So the bottom line is, what my team has done is, we don't, we don't determine the value. That's one of the things that I tell my folks all the time. We in IT, that's not a value conversation for an IT professional to provide. Our job is to provide them with the cost data because then they can determine the benefits that they're getting and they can determine that value. So I have a cloud financial operations team and they actually focus on, on the consumption of our products and on a monthly basis, they actually charge back to our business units based on their actual consumption. This is helping mature our organization's understanding and they're actually using the universal language of money to do so. So this provides decision support for business leaders to understand whether their technology investments are delivering the value that they had anticipate. Overall, this drives TQ higher and digital judgment improves. Terms like cloud, AI, quantum computing, machine learning, natural language processing, data center, they're really not crystal clear to most, I would say. So how do we increase that minimum level of understanding at a 101 level? A lot of times people I talk to really have a fear that AI will take over lots of jobs. And I will, I will, I will say that our jobs will change for the better. But the concern I have is that if the AI actually becomes smarter, than humans, <laughs> there's a risk that AI will be able to actually um, to overtake more jobs than we have available. So how do we build a training muscle that everybody can come forward with? And it's not just for tech professionals. This requires a culture shift. This is actually going from right now, we're away from home. We are um, learning away from the job. One of the things that I like to say now is learning is our job. So this is an example um, that inspires me that Accenture has done. They have created a YouTube channel and they've created what I call snackable learning options. You'll notice that these are each less than two minutes and they're very 101 level content. These are things that people can do asynchronously in their own time and that it's really simple and it's short and it's highly digestible. I'm planning to build and deliver this to my company so that when we're having conversations across the board, we're actually having them in a more common language. And looking towards the future, I want to make sure that people are going to be able to get the training that they need when they need it. So we're at a tipping point now, basically, and I think it's important. Um, I loved seeing all the pictures of the folks in the field. One of the challenges is, is that no one wants to, or probably has time anymore, to go sit in the, what used to do four or five day classes to learn a whole new platform. The idea is to be able to learn in the moment at that point in time. Most people just need a, a question answered or a feature explained, not necessarily an entire weeks and months of training. So ultimately, this will help us raise our collective TQ. So I'm gonna leave you with the words that I, this is truly on my desktop wallpaper as a CIO. This is from Gartner, and this is, inspires me to remember um, I was, like I've said, I spent 25 plus years in tech and there's been a period of my career that IT controlled everything, right? And the IT organizations, and they wouldn't let anybody do anything. I'm actually shifting that to the opposite mindset. My job is to equip and empower others outside of the IT organization to safely build and maintain digital capabilities. But this is something that revolves around the fact that people, everybody's TQ is increasing and everybody's digital judgment is higher so that they're making good decisions, they're building secure solutions, they're partnering with those of us in IT that can help them do that, and making sure that everyone has a role to play in that build. So I wanted to just leave you with a couple of thoughts. Everyone has a role, like I mentioned, um, and partnering with those that know and understand things that are below the waterline that I mentioned, and those of you that actually understand above the waterline, those squads of working teams are gonna change the way we work together and deliver on the future that we all hope to realize. Learning is the job, and my goal is to enhance everybody's ability to learn so that we can raise our collective TQ together. Thank you.